Hi. Welcome to quarantine day three and good getting internet. I'm not doing so great. Um, took my COVID test about an hour or so ago. Um, so presumably I will be out of quarantine tomorrow at roughly this time. I don't know exactly if it's exactly 24 hours or just additional day. They seem to be indicating it's more just another day because my hmm, reserved hotel reservation ends tomorrow. So, like, the quarantine hotel only had me pay... And they asked me to pay in advance for everything, and they only had me pay until overnight tonight. So, presumably, I will be out tomorrow and actually be able to visit my partner, which is the whole reason why I'm here to begin with. Um... But I'm not doing so great, mentally. You can't tell from the fact that I can barely even focus on the camera. My concentration's completely shot. Uh, I haven't slept very well. I've t slept a total of three hours last night. Uh, hour and a half between when I went to bed and when I woke up completely drenched in sweat. It's the second time that's happened and then went back to sleep again after a couple of hours of trying to fall back asleep slash just getting up for a bit and then going back to bed before my alarm went off to go call the uh, security team that's here in the hotel to schedule my COVID test because I was able to do that starting at 9 this morning. It's currently 11 for reference. Um... What this kind of crap? Can't really see it, but it's raining. Uh, it was bright and sunny for mm, about five or ten minutes. Roughly the time that it took for me to leave this room to go down to the ground floor to get my COVID test. Which, by the way, they poked my brain for that test. My sinuses are still very unhappy with me on that one. Uh, don't want to deal with that again, except that I'm going to have to deal with that again when I go back. <sighs> um, let's see. What's going on? I've had very little sleep. Uh, and a main chunk of the reason why I've had so little sleep is because I am not handling this very well. So I've mentioned before, I have severe depression, I have multiple anxiety disorders, and I've also mentioned before that I am definitely on the extroverted end of the spectrum of introvert to extrovert. What I haven't mentioned is why. It's not just that I regain energy by being around other people. It's the fact that I really don't like myself. And when I'm by myself, I'm the only person around to interact with. The interaction between me and myself, so to speak, causes depression spirals for me. They cause my anxiety to spike. It's something that I don't think my partner quite fully understands about me, because they're very different. They're very much introverted. But... The worst thing that you can do for me is to give myself, is give me space. That is the absolute worst thing you can do in any type of stressful situation for me. So, you know, the worst thing that could have happened immediately after that horrible travel day that I had was to be immediately shoved into quarantine. And it's not like I didn't know this was coming. I was hoping to have a better travel day than that, and I know historically I'm generally fine being by myself for about three to four days before I start having problems. In this case, I started having problems on day one to two. Uh, I shouldn't be too surprised, but I was hoping it'd be better than this, and... Yeah, uh, the lack of sleep is 
definitely harming things. Uh, my plan is to stay awake for the next 55 minutes or so until they serve lunch. Once I finish eating lunch, I'm going back to bed for a three-hour nap minimum, because I've only had about three hours of sleep total, and that wasn't contiguous. But... Yeah. And I'm hoping that helps, because I need to... I'm going to be running a role-playing game tonight. Tonight, this time zone, afternoon in Madison time zone. But... Yeah. I'm heavily thinking about just canceling it. Which means that I would have even less social time, which you get the idea. It's a depression spiral. And recognizing it doesn't actually help. Because I've known this about me for a long time. Um, growing up when I was a teenager and living with my mother, my mom and I used to have to take breaks from each other. And the reason why we had to take breaks from each other is that we were similar enough in personality where we were clashing with each other frequently. And it took me a while to figure out that whole similar in personality part. Um, I figured it out by the time I was about 18 or 19. Unfortunately, it means that I have the same problem when I'm by myself. Of I have a personality clash with myself, basically. And I'll start mentally getting into arguments. Uh, it's a common thing for people with anxiety disorders to, like, disasterize or start imagining a conversation with somebody else and start getting into an argument, a heated argument, them saying really nasty things about the person that they're, about yourself, and just imagining the worst possible scenarios. I do that by myself. I don't need to get into an argument with an imaginary person to do that. I literally get in an argument with myself. And it's a problem. That's why I, whenever something majorly bad happens, like for instance, um, one of my parents dying, or when else have I had to do this recently? Memory being shot is a normal problem when it comes to me and lack of sleep, so I think that's a normal problem for pretty much everybody. But like major stressful events, the last thing, the worst possible thing that you can do for me is to leave me alone. I immediately try to seek out somebody else to hang around. Even if it's not even talking about the subject, they're just like doing errands or anything like that, I need to be around another person. Because if I'm not, I start having very, very, very negative thoughts. Um, So, I haven't played any video games the entire time I've been here. I've had enough concentration. I've watched my partner play some Skyrimfall, but that's about it. Um, I haven't read anything. I have my e-reader right here. I have not turned it on. I showed you that I was charging it. That's the last. And the last time I touched this outside of right now was when I unplugged the charger. I just can't get myself to do it. Physically, I'm not doing so great. Uh, it's all stress-related stuff, not COVID. I have no reason to believe that I'm infected with COVID. I am pretty sure my COVID test is going to come out negative, and I will be free to go tomorrow. Because... I have zero symptoms. I've been doing my best to try to avoid any form of exposure whatsoever. Much to the dismay of the Norwegian government, it feels, but I've been doing my best. I think I'm fine. But, like, for instance, I have extremely bad heartburn. Um, I do have an acid reflux disorder. I take medication for it. But one of the things that triggers heartburn for me is drinking still water. Both myself and my mother had this problem. Um, if we drink too much still water during the day, we start getting heartburn. With my medication, that barrier's gone up quite a bit, but I'm only drinking still water here and have only drank still water for three days straight now. The fact that I'm getting heartburn is not too big of a surprise. Unfortunately, I have no way of dealing with it, and it's waking me up. Uh, 
everything about this quarantine has been pretty bad for me. The only thing I can say is at least I have internet access. At least I can still talk with people. One of my fears about this whole process, well, I have multiple fears. One is that I'm going to need to do this again because I'm going to be getting married in the next couple of months. Basically, once the paperwork is filled out, I need to come back to Norway and get married before I can start the process of filling out the paperwork for moving here. And if Norway keeps their stupid quarantine situation, I'm going to have to go through this again. I never want to go through this again. This has been awful. But I might not have a choice. The second thing I'm afraid of is that this is going to be what it's like when I move here. Not quarantine itself. Obviously, that I'm not going to be in quarantine if I move here. Because once I fill out that residency paperwork, one of the things that I get is a national ID number. And the moment I have a national ID number, Norway goes, Oh, you're vaccinated! I didn't realize! Seriously, okay. If anybody from the country of Norway is watching this, not like people, but representatives or people who work for the country of Norway... Giving a random non-Norwegian resident this quarantine situation costs you and your government and the person involved more in the way of money, time, and risk than actually processing the same thing that you do for anybody with a Norwegian national ID. I mean, what? For an example, this hotel costs 500 kroner a day for me. That is the deductible that I am paying, basically. Which is significantly less than the hotel room itself. In fact, let me go look up how much that costs. The current pricing for this room, the room that I'm in right now, is 1120 kroner a night. Uh, that would be about, what, $125, $130 a night? So, already I'm paying less than half the room cost. Never mind the fact that they're providing me four meals a day. Now, some of that is probably being negotiated with the Norwegian government for, like, a bulk discount type of thing. But let's just assume that the Norwegian government is paying just as much as I am. So they're paying 500 kroner a day for a minimum of four days. So that is 2,000 kroner per person coming through that they are paying for. On top of that, they are paying for all of the testing. I have not paid for a single one of these COVID tests. I'll need to pay when I leave, but that's for the U.S. government, not for the Norwegian government. So Norway is not involved in that whatsoever. COVID tests are probably costing the Norwegian government probably an additional 500 kroner. So 2,500 kroner. Or 3,000 kroner. Sorry, I forgot about the test when I came in. Um, so let's call it 3,000 kroner, which is about... 375 let's call it $400. So for $400, they have forced me to be in here for four nights, increasing my risk of catching COVID because of the way that they are handling things. Again, the place that I was most likely to catch COVID at would have been the Bergen Airport. The second most likely place would have been the lobby of the Safari Hotel. Because I can't socially distance, nobody was wearing masks, you get the idea. Um... Instead, they can go through the same process that they do for Norwegian residents and see, oh, you're actually vaccinated. S okay, because you're vaccinated, we're going to treat you like everybody else that is vaccinated coming into the country. I have the same risk chance that somebody coming in from a orange zone, I think it would be for the EU. Which is... Somebody who's at relatively high risk for catching COVID, but since I am fully vaccinated, it's relatively low after all. Which, if I did have a, let's say for instance I was an Irish citizen, then I could have come here without having to go into quarantine. The equivalent infection rate in Europe, if I would have had a European COVID passport, I'd be allowed into the country with no problems. And no quarantine. Anyway, sorry, that was a bit of a sidetrack. Um, 
So yeah, my concern is that this isolation is going to be my experience when I move here. Now, to be fair, when I move here, one, my partner will be able to come by and say hi more frequently. Uh, for reference, my partner will not be moving in with me, at least initially, because we each have three cats, six cats, and a apartment is a really bad idea, uh, to put it mildly. Also, you know, they own their house. I don't want to live in the middle of nowhere. Maybe at some point I'll do, uh, we'll do a team video on the fact that neither one of us actually, uh, the way we're least compatible is our desires for where we, the types of places that we want to live. They're not mutually incompatible, but there's not a huge overlap, shall we say. But anyway, um, my concern, my concern the entire time about moving to Norway has been how do I socialize when I arrive? Because I'm not going to be fluent in Norwegian when I arrive. I can read a decent amount of Norwegian at this point, but just to get a gist of things. It's more, oh, I recognize that word, that word, that word, that word, and that word. That means that, okay, with those words in here, you're talking about cheese. Okay. That's not conversant Norwegian. Not even close. And I'm not going to be conversant in Norwegian when I arrive. Even if I stopped everything, focused on nothing but learning Norwegian, didn't even try to get a job or anything like that, I will not be conversant in Norwegian when I arrive to move. Which is fine. I can get around without any problems living in Norway, like, logistically. The areas of Norwegian that I know tend to be food-based, so I can go grocery shopping. That's not a big deal. And a huge chunk of Norwegians speak English fluently. It's something like 90 plus percent. Especially when you get to the younger generations, it's more like 95 plus percent. Uh, but their social language is Norwegian. How am I going to get any social interaction? How am I going to not be isolated? This experience highlights that that is a major danger for me. And yes, danger. Because if somebody is in a depression spiral long enough, very bad things happen. And I am certainly no exception to that. So I need to keep that in mind. The fact that standard quote-unquote business hours in Norway, most of the day is going to be times that I can't interact with other people in the U.S. online, that's going to be a problem. Uh, if I have the... If I have a job from the United States that I'm going to be working U.S. business hours, so that's second shift in Norway, basically, that means that during daytime hours, basically, everybody's asleep. There's nobody for me to interact with. I'm really worried about that. I'm re really worried about a lot of things. And... Yeah. I don't know. This is just another ramble. I don't really have much to say at this point. Also, the camera is really far away for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should probably stop talking. I'm dehydrating myself. And drinking even more water is not the greatest of plans. I need to get out of here. I'll talk to you later, Internet.